It's been about two years since I last played Black Desert Online, but since you guys have been requesting it and there's been releases of seasons, new classes, and all this other content, I figured, hey, why not? I'm a bit curious why the game is still remaining very, very popular despite its pretty blatant pay-to-win aspect. So maybe I can find out firsthand what is keeping everybody playing if I jump in myself. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. Let's get started. I've got no idea who any of these characters are. I think I had a hacker eye naming scheme going on, but gave up halfway. Striker man? Yep, that definitely looks like something I would make. I guess I'll start out playing my ranger just to see what I can remember. As soon as I log in, I've got all these pop-ups and rewards and daily login stuff. The UI looks completely different. I'm gonna have to get used to all of these buttons being in different places. No idea what's going on here, a dark rift. I recognize these boss names as Giath and Beg and stuff like that. Pretty sure I remember how to play a ranger. Nope. If I remember correctly, I had my workers set up on this account pretty nicely, doing that whole lumber thing for the Calpheon timber crates also have quite a few lumber crates built up over there but I'm guessing everyone is rolling probably in like billions of silver by now and this amount might just be worth pennies all right I found one of the rifts on the map that I had that quest thing for it's pretty close by so I might as well go check it out just to see what the hell those things are first things first I need to get my horse I don't remember my horse situation good old tier 3 Kiki let's go on an adventure Wait, shit, the boy- No, Kiki! Seriously! We were just reunited! I'm sorry, Kiki! Alright, here's the rift. It seems like this is that tower boss from the story quest from way back when, so I'm guessing all the rifts are just a change to the scroll system. I literally have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm pretty sure the gear I stopped playing with on this account was pretty bad. Yep, and I'm dead. At this point, I've got absolutely no clue what I'm doing. I think the only chance is gonna be to start fresh. So I'm going to make a season character, even though I think the season is ending pretty soon. The good thing is though, I do have pets on this account, so I don't need to worry about that looting stuff because that looting system in BDO is really, really tedious. That is a lot more classes than I remember. Holy smokes. There's a guardian. I looks like a female giant. There's an archer. It's like a male ranger. Lawn looks kind of cool. Mystic is the female striker. I've never played it, but I knew that much before I quit. And now there's this little girl class? I'm just gonna go with the ranger because I feel like I've got enough to figure out without having to worry about what my class is doing, and I'm pretty familiar with the ranger. The thing in BDO, character customization, is that it's really easy to make beautiful characters, and when everybody is beautiful, no one is beautiful. So, the trick to making a good character that people will remember is to abandon the good looking part. I'm gonna name her Haku Cutie. And let's jump into the game. Ooh, a new cinematic. That's pretty cool. Haku Cutie is ready to begin her adventure. Not starting in Balanos is definitely different. Looks like they changed the tutorial and the intro parts of the game and more cutscenes, which is nice. I know a lot of people had no idea what was going on with the story. I don't remember getting explosive evasive shot this early. More cutscenes. I'm just gonna skip these as the story seems more or less what I remember. Good ol' auto pathing gives me time to figure out what the hell is going on in the UI while the game takes me where I need to go. Thank you very much, sir auto pathing. And that's level 10. Seems like the chest it gave me from the seasonal reward has some nice basic gear upgrades. I will take it. It's not much better than what I was wearing, but I love free stuff. And, ooh, some gold bars. Hey, this is sending me to another one of those rifts. It looks like I was right. They replaced the scrolls with rifts. And goodbye, Red Nose. First boss dead. Pretty much as easy as it used to be. There it is, Velia. It's been so damn long since I've been here. I'm getting a bit nostalgic. I'm also running super fast from the speed buff I get from the quests. And the second boss is dead. Easy peasy. Oh hey, I got a pop-up. It says we are done exploring Balanos. Did that quest just give me a free pet? Is Kakao giving out free pets now? Holy shit, I'm gonna have to name him something good. I'm gonna name him Joey. Joey is a good doggo name. Come on, Kiki, we got a ride to Serendia. Yeehaw! 
The skill system looks completely redone. It looks a lot easier to navigate, so no complaints there. It's making it much easier to find out what skills are linked. I think before it was just like a tiny skill box window. Now they've got a whole screen for it. Good old Heidel, my old base of operations. This damn parkour tower climb. I remember for some reason people really struggled to getting up this tower when the game first came out. I'm glad it's still here to torment the new players. Beg down, that's boss number three in the story. Who that boss actually did some damage to me. I guess my gear is falling behind, but boss number four is dead. There it is, finally, the bane of my existence. Yay, I did it! Thanks for the dopamine! These frogs were on the old grinding path if I remember right. I think I might just ditch the main story quest here as it's getting a bit repetitive and I might just grind the way up to speed to max level. I'm pretty sure these cultists were good until the low 30s. The experience isn't bad here but I'm killing these guys super super slow. I need to find a way to upgrade my gear because my stuff is sucking. Apparently, as a seasonal character, I'm extremely limited in what I can equip. Basically, only the stuff from the main story or the Tuvala stuff. So I've got no choice but to go back and go do the main quest. So now I am running all the way back to Heidel where I left off the last quest. I'm also running because I don't remember where I parked Kiki. The entire main quest seems like it's basically go to place, kill some mobs, kill a boss, and then go to a new place. It's really getting old really fast as none of it's really challenging. Luckily for you guys, I can use the magic of video editing so you guys won't need to watch all this stuff. Go to place, kill some mobs, kill a boss, and repeat. Go to place, kill some mobs, kill a boss. Finally, Calpheon City, even though I was just here on my main like a couple hours ago. This quest is legitimately making my finger hurt. It's making me run to all of these freaking council members and I'm just spamming my R key as hard as I can. My index finger is starting to cramp from this shit. I've hit it like 50 billion times just to get through this insane amount of dialogue. Holy cow. Can I get a summary or something, guys? I take it back. I miss the boss killing. I thought that was repetitive, but this Calpheon stuff is just making me run back and forth to the same NPCs like 50 times. Go to place. Kill some mobs. And kill a boss. To be fair, there is some stuff in between. Hey, Kazarka, give me your goddamn weapon. Your soul. Long time no see. Do you remember me at all? Yeah, you were in the intro you cinematic. They're giving me a free horse? I just need to think of a good name. Filu is my cat's name, but this guy's free, so I'm just gonna name him Freebie. It's a tier 5. See you later, Kiki. It's no wonder they gave me a free tier 5 horse. I've gotta run all the way to the east. Literally 10 monsters later, it's sending me west. Getting my money's worth out of that tier 5 mount already. Another free pet? Is this really the same cacao? Thank God, Calpheon's over. If I remember correctly, media questing was a little bit more involved. I got more stones for the Tuvala stuff, which I think is the main seasonal stuff, so let's hit it till we quit it. I'm pretty sure I'm wasting stones here, but enchanting is really a love-hate relationship. Sometimes you just want to smash the button. 14 enchant level, that's not bad. It's way better than what I was using. What the heck is a Kafra stone? Why are there so many damn types of black stones now? It's way too confusing. I miss the old days. What happened to just armor, weapon? That was it. Back in my day, that's all we needed. Bags cleaned up. It's onward to Medea or Medea. Media, Media, Media. Whatever. Let's go. Let's go, freebie. Yeehaw. This boss is wrecking me. I've only got baby potions, probably doesn't help that I just ditched my enchanted armor, but damn. Suck on that, fire dude. That was actually fun. That's the first time I felt challenged so far, and it only took to level 50. So one of my friends just told me there are these things now in the loyalty shop, these 530% experience scrolls, limited per account. I'm gonna pop one and just see what I can do. There's probably a better way to use these, but whatever, I'm tired of questing at this point. I'm just looking to do something different. I'm popping the scroll at level 52 with my other experience buffs, and I am grinding at Helms. And 56. That took 25 minutes to gain four levels. That is not bad. Back in my day, <laughs> I'm sounding like an old man now, but back in my day, that grind took a whole week both ways. Alas, Altanova. 
So apparently guys, I've been reading in game chat and it seems like there is this quest reward from somewhere in Camasylvia that makes you get 30% more experience from quests that will speed up leveling a ton. I am kind of bored of the main quest and I've never once entered the Camasylvia region. So I'm going to navigate to this quest. Pretty sure it's this one and I will knock that out just to see something new. I think this is the right one. Let me begin my Camasylvia adventure, which basically involves more running. Let's go freebie. At this point, I feel like they should have given me like a tier 8 horse or something. There's at least a lot of really cool looking areas to travel to in this region and it's places I haven't seen before. I like it. I was expecting it to look more elfy though, but it's still nice to see something new for once as everything up to this point is just quests I've already done before. Is this a talking llama giving me trivia? It kind of feels like parts of this area were built to be like a scenic movie set piece. I'm running through a whole lot of pretty but otherwise empty and pointless areas. It's just making it longer and longer to get to point A to point B to point C. I think that's it, right? I got it. I got the thingy. Whew, I got it. That's two hours of my life gone and I guess I just go back to Medea, Medea, Media, whatever. More quests. R, 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 R. I guess I might as well go do the awakening quest. I'm really not feeling like doing the main quest, but at the same time, I'm kind of dreading this awakening quest. If I remember correctly, it took forever. Gotta run all the way back to Calpheon, talk to this lady, and yep, time to run all the way back to Medea. Autopathing in BDO is like the game's way of saying, hey, don't play me, go do something more productive, which of course I use that time to be even less productive. I'm just going to button mash the same attack over and over and over and it still does the trick. I'm good. Wait, that's it? I unlocked them both? I'm awakened and successioned? Thank God, I was dreading doing that five hour long awakening quest. I'm not sure if they just made this easier to get or if it's because I already did this on my other ranger, but that is awesome. I've been looking forward to check out the succession and the awakening stuff and seeing how it all works. I think I'm just going to go with the succession as it ramps up the abilities I'm already familiar with. I never played much with awakening and might have to try it out later down the line. There's no distractions left freebie. It's just us and the main story quest. Giddy up. Kill the boss, and another one, and another one, and another one. It's another pet. How's Cacao gonna make money if they just keep giving them all away? Oh, I forgot to name it. This one's gonna be called Boopy the Cat. Medea is done. Medea, Medea, whatever. There's my Tetuvala. Not gonna lie, this is the second Tet I've ever gotten since I started playing BDO. I'm sure this weapon isn't that good, but it's mine. You guys can't have it. I'm keeping it. So apparently, nobody told me this, but when you finish Medea, Medea, Media, you can trade your pen blue gear from the main quest for all Pry Tuvala pieces. And penning the blue gear is super, super easy because I've got like a thousand of these enchanting stones. So basically, there was no need for me to enchant any of my Tuvala gear up to Pry by myself, and I was just wasting a ton of stones. Thanks, Black Spirit. This is a guy that sells combat training scrolls. I've heard a bit about these. I'm going to buy a five hour training scroll plus the one I just accidentally used from the season reward box. I don't really know how it works. It said I just talked to a scarecrow. I think that's it. All right, I'm going to go to bed and let's see how I do in six hours. I wake up, I'm almost level 57. This is the easiest level of my life. I'm almost tempted to just level all the way to 61 using these scrolls. Here we go. Good old Valencia. Finally getting into the black desert of black desert. Took a while. Don't attack me. Don't attack me. Please don't attack me. Come on, dude. I'm here to rescue you. I'm out. I'm out. Peace, peace. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. So I do need to go to work today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop one of these 10 hour AFK combat training scrolls. And then I'm just going to hit the scarecrow. I'm going to minimize the game and then I'll be back in 10 hours just to see how I did. So 10 hours was about 40% experience. That means probably about 24 hours of AFK farming would get me from, I think, 57 to 58. That's kind of depressing. I remember that grind taking like a week of killing non-stop monsters at Sawson's. 
At the same time, I'm kind of tempted to just use this to get all the way to 61. If it wasn't for the season ending soon, I would probably do it. I don't know what that says about the game and the leveling process though. Where the hell did I park my goddamn horse? Come on freebie, let's go questing. Did they remove the desert debuff or am I just getting really lucky? I know I have a desert fox, but still, I feel like I should have gotten heat stroke or hypothermia at least once by now. I'm just straight up running through the desert. Yay, Valencia! The least visited city probably in the entire game. I don't know what the hell this bird thing is, but I am determined to kill it. The fact that I've never had to buy potions yet is biting me in the ass. These freaking crescent guys keep respawning. If this guy knocks me down again, I am Dunzor. Finally got him. That was actually fun. Why can't they just make the whole game engaging like that instead of just throwing hundreds of fodder at me? And the thing is, that wasn't even part of the main quest. I It was just here, I guess. That was... I want to fight more stuff like that. I think that's it. I'm done with Valencia. I've finally done the main quest, and I only had to run across the desert like five times. Thank god that shit's over. God damn. I just did another one of those AFK bedtime grinds. I woke up, and I'm basically 59 again. Two more levels to go. There's this questing leveling guide on YouTube by a YouTuber named Evil Do Us Harm. So I'm just gonna follow that to knock out the last two levels. I'll put a link to the video that I'm following in the description. He seems like a great source of updated BDO content. I finally found another player to party with. I am so happy. I'm pretty sure this is because I'm on the seasonal server at the end of the season. But I haven't had to engage with another player once up until this point, besides a few guys that were stealing my mobs at Helms. That might be a big reason why the leveling hasn't been really that engaging and fun for me, as I kind of felt like it's been a single player game up until now. Just having someone else in your group makes grinding go way faster. Level 60, this is the highest level I've ever reached in BDO. 61! That- honestly those last two levels went by super fast, it's thanks to the questing guide and I legitimately had fun in the Camas Sylvia region. I wish I did not have to drudge through all of the other stuff to get to it. So I did it, I beat the season, I got the rewards, it took me less than 5 days of playing probably 4-5 to five hours a day. I feel like after all of the hard work that Haku Cutie has gone through, she's slowly grown on me from being a joke character to something I feel a little bit invested in. So while I give her a much needed makeover, let me share my thoughts on BDO's current state after playing through the season and having played it at launch. If you are a new player or a returning player, definitely do the seasons. I feel like I caught up on levels and gear massively from not having played for 3 years and I feel already that I'm at a level where I might be able to participate in some of the big boy content with the other players which is a nice thing. While I was going through the leveling process, I was constantly putting thought into the question of why I think BDO still has a pretty decent population. And I think it really didn't dawn on me the reason for it until right when I was ready to finish my journey and stop playing. I felt so tempted to leave the game running on my taskbar and just keep getting progress on my account, even though I didn't want to keep playing anymore. I feel like Black Desert Online is designed to be optimized. The entire gameplay loop revolves around you optimizing your time. Basically it presents you with a plethora of treadmills for you to run on, and the fun of playing BDO is basically optimizing how you run on as many of the treadmills at the same time. It's fun planning out the most efficient way to progress certain aspects of your gameplay so that you're always growing in multiple things at once. Let's look at this example. Let's say you go to grind in a spot in the world. You're getting combat experience for killing the monsters, skill experience for using skills, you get silver trash drops, you get enchanting items, you get event items, then the best items themselves usually have a chance to drop depending on where you're farming and you'll get some gear for crafting. While you are doing this, you will have your pets out so they are gaining experience. You're running around so you get breath experience which increases your stamina. If you're eating buff food at the same time, you get health experience to max out your HP. And your workers are working in the background collecting materials and making money for you. And don't forget the hourly event and login rewards that are waiting for you the longer you stay in the game. Then, when it's time for you to call it a day, you gotta make sure your pets are fed, your workers are full of energy, and you log out at an AFK activity so you can keep grinding those treadmills even when you are not at the computer. All of these treadmills are constantly running anytime you play BDO. 
and they're all feeding you dopamine hits as you achieve things constantly in the game. The minimizing the game AFK stuff even helps lure you back to the game when you stop playing because you know there's a nice hit of dopamine waiting for you when you log back in. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with making a game like this. It makes it highly engaging and highly, highly addictive. Optimizing stuff is fun, that's why city builder games and stuff exists. My problem with BDO comes from its aggressive monetization of all of these treadmills. The PvP endgame is really fun, but it is so gear dependent, and all of these treadmills, be it bartering, farming, grinding, trade skilling, etc., all of them make the game appear to have an ocean worth of content, but it's just an illusion. It's really just a pond because at the end of the day, all of the treadmills lead to the same place, which is BDO's enchanting system. It's horribly RNG based. You can have bad luck and completely erase hours of grinding just down the drain. It's just gone. Hours of your life just thrown out. But gear level is super important at the same time in PvP endgame and BDO aggressively monetizes all of its treadmills so that once you are hooked on their dopamine, you feel so incredibly inefficient to not have the cash shop buffs that help you do these tasks that you're basically wasting your lifetime if you don't buy them. I say all of this and knowing full well BDO's tactics to get players hooked and then drain them of money, I still felt the urge to keep playing and doing this event to get good gear. That's how powerful and addictive the game can be, so I 100% get why people can still play this game. Luckily, I mustered up the willpower to pull away, uninstall the game, and stop from getting addicted to it again, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty tempted to make another character for the upcoming Season 2 that will be starting in September. But that's it for this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this from me where I dive in and play through some old titles or maybe some new titles like this. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. I am Boopin' out.